Hello guys and welcome back to Middle Earth. This time I bring you back into Gondor. After my take on the Rangers the past year, it was just about time till I do the same for the infantry. Perhaps some of you may have seen some of the past video I made concerning the Gondor. One of them was about the tactics, how they would behave on the battlefield together and I did this with uh, about uh, six friends and uh, the video is on the channel just go in the description and you will have a direct link if you want to see how the shields, spears and everything could move together on the battlefield facing, facing an enemy go there and you will see how it's done I also made two other videos concerning the Gondor and it was uh, more about uh, the techniques uh, in the in the duel it was uh, about uh, how to be a with uh, the weapons and then we have uh, sparring with uh, my friend and you you will have this once again in the channel so check the description you will have the links if you want to see sparring with this gear and uh, the opponent which is an ara dream back on the gear this is what i think could be the basics for the gondorian soldiers and there is some things that I have to edit on my gear, there is some things that I have to add, but let's start with what I have to produce today. The boots, the uncle boots there, are the first step in my gear. Why uncle boots? Because simply it helps to hold the oil coal and I do think it's a good choice for a soldier to have something like that. And even if you add over there after uh, a padded leg and even some uh, protection on the chin it won't bother you and I think and I also prefer to have ankle boots for my comfort could be shorter of course yes you can have shorter shoes but according to my preferences we'll go for that and these boots have been made by Jean-Baptiste Ferret which <laughs> now you heard a lot about he made basically nearly all of my shoes for reenactment and uh, for different uh, costumes and character links in the, in the descriptions once again for the, the legs my legs are covered with simple hose which came up there and are fixed you see with the the underwear, the shorts, which stop around the, the knee there, which them are white. This is black, black wool, and those are white. Like uh, you see, uh, the the lining of the gambeson is white. The outside is black. So uh, I play with these uh, two colors for the this kind of uh, of soldiers, and. Of course, you can have on the leg also, you can add a padded leg which will provide more protection and uh, also some uh, piece also on the chin, something like that. I'll see later when I have uh, think about it enough. Concerning the gambeson there, you see it's a simple gambeson which provides still a lot of movement, no holes in the armpit because I really hate holes in the armpit and I avoid them as much as possible. Especially if you are a guy which is a soldier, an infantryman, which is at the front line, well, I don't think that this kind of opening there directly to your armpit would be a good idea and you can still have something that could move correctly without having the hole there. It just depends on the pattern just that it's just a question of pattern in fact and how you build the gear and the gambeson itself the gambeson is open at the front there which helps to remove it easily even if uh, we could uh, perhaps imagine that uh, there is more simple gambeson just like on the 13th century or 12th century that just, just pearl over you which have no opening there at the front. Well, I prefer to go for something which have an opening there uh, to be more able to remove it and put it back with 
it's more convenient especially when you are covered in sweat to remove your gabizon it's much easier to just open it and roll it over roll it back because uh, well, with the sweat you get stuck in it and especially uh, when you have a non-open gumbison to be removed you will you'll need the help of a friend trust me <laughs> it's, most of the time it's quite complicated and for the padding I, I think we can go for both white or black both can be good perhaps the black for the infantry coming from uh, Minas Tirith or from s somewhere which have uh, a higher uh, rank, I don't know, something like that, we, it could be think uh, a bit or, well, same for the white, even if, of course, if it's, uh, if it's black, it will be uh, perhaps uh, something that would cost more. For the padding on the head, you have the choice between this marvelous hat there. Something like that. Uh, we all look very, very intelligent in those gear every time. Once again, when you have something like that on your face, on your head, you look like the smartest guy in the room. For the end, you can have a pair of leather gloves. Brown could be good. Could be black as well. Padded mitts there, which could be like here covered in chainmail. Here I, I would have to edit the, the gumbison sleeve in order to, to fit this, uh, this mix of mail, but that's something for later. Padding outside and there. All the rings, the chainmail, in order to protect you from the cuts and the bruises that could come right on your end. One of the main protective gear that will have a soldier will be this uh, helmet. And this is one of the ideas I had for the, the Gondorian soldiers, something like that. Which have here a good nose piece. I like also the shape there for the eyebrow. And the eye look there would be uh, something for perhaps. Uh, special unit, some, something like that, or captain or something I, I would be a bit uh, spot on for this uh, kind of shape. The big problem there is the, see, the cheek wards, the cheek wards that are actually not guarding any cheek but guarding my ear, there, no cheek, there covered, see, it's on the side, and if I want to close it, there, and put it on the cheek. You see on the nose piece just move forward because well simply it haven't been well placed there. It should be more at the front, much more forward there. Much more forward in order to cover like I said your cheek. There. Not anything else than the cheek. And here it's just coming up over my ear and it's not doing me any good. So I'll have to remove this and uh, move them forward in order to cover correctly my cheek there, which will provide much more protection. One last detail concerning this helmet on its shape, it's uh, the fact that see the elongated head there, uh, refer to the one of the few drawings that have been left by Tolkien and it was a drawing concerning the the profile, the overall look of the crown helmet uh, thing for the, the King of Gondor. And this is why I took uh, the, the idea that perhaps for guys having an important rank in the army, in the Gondorian army, perhaps having a uh, more elongated, uh, higher, uh, higher helmet like this would be a good idea and also give them some cheek guards there in order to protect much more their faces and perhaps details like this uh, decorations on the helmet stars 
even wings, well, wings we know for the guard of the citadel, so let's see. But I, I do believe that there is uh, plenty of things that could be done based on this idea about the, about the, the King of Gondor and its crown with it's a bit crown uh, helmet. Well, this is something that gave me inspiration for this helmet and will on the long run as well. Here is another shape for the, the helmet. See? Much more simple, a bit smaller as well. See, not that high. And um, they have a good design also, I like it. On the Abro there. This helmet there could be the helmet for the simple soldier. The helmet that everyone in a uh, Minas Tirith army would have. In order to have the basic protection for the head, of course. Good nose piece to match with the shield, we'll see why. And this will also help you to still see correctly around you, still heard correctly as well. If you just have a padding without anything on the side there, it's even easier, it's much easier even to listen to what's around you. So just a simple padding without uh, things on the ear and you will be able to uh, hear everything around you without any problems. You know, even if the nose piece is there, you see right in front of me, right on my face, the placement make it really, um, it's nearly blocking absolutely nothing on my vision. I just have a blurry little thin uh, bar there, but it's nothing that would stop me, that would uh, be a problem when I'm trying to fight, when I'm trying to defend myself, not at all. And what is probably the most important part of this gear is the shield. The shield there covers nearly the whole body. See? This shield also is very convenient, not only because of its shape and how much it covers you when you are on the ground. There. This shield could be completed by protection there on the leg. Also, with the helmet there, you can have a great protection because it just helps you as you go keep the nose guard there in contact with the shield. As you got, if you keep the nose guard in contact with the shield here, it helps to always be able to tuck your head beneath the protection here in order to protect you in the best way possible. And will help you to it guide. In fact it's like a rail. Monorail guiding you there. This is why you have no space on helmets. It's in order to have a link between the helmet itself and also the shield. It's not it's not for protection directly because if most of the time you won't have it coming right there that would be deflected. It could, it could, yes, it could bring this protection, of course, yes. And it's a good thing. But one thing also is that this is working also with the shield. And this is why it's really interesting to match them together to create this link there. And also, when you have a strap there, like this, a long strap see in the back here, the gauge strap, this helps also to move to move the shield with you. I push there just with the forearm and you see the shield move. It helps you in the movement if you want to just go up there, bring the bottom up on your shield which could be convenient at some moment. 
And also it helps you to hold the, the shield correctly. In that way your whole body helps to carry the shield. Not only your arm, but the whole body. Because it's see, a big shield, and it occurs as it's that big. It's heavier than, it was, than anything that could be shorter. This strap could be useful during the fight because it helps you relieve a bit of the, the pain you will have over time in your arm, in your elbow, in uh, the shoulder because of all the movements you will make with your shield in order to protect yourself. It will help with that and also it's something that could be helpful when you are carrying around your shield. It's easier to carry your shield on the shoulder with this kind of strap there. It's uh, very convenient. There you have the padding, the diagonal here, a large piece of leather there, a large band with once again the little ropes there. There goes the same my end. Two smaller straps crisscrossing there. It gives you a better hold on your shield and you have the there here and the gauge which is strapped fixed to uh, to another strap which is rifted to the shield and same goes on the other side of the gauge. You can even if you want just remove the shield there. It's take might be wrong. Use your arm there bring it back and you're ready so it's very convenient to have this gauge there and bring a much better dynamic to your shield that shield could work with other weapons like a sword there simple sword quite short and as you saw it's quite easy to Remove it from your scabbard without uncovering this up. So here and you're good to go. You're ready. You can already slash. And it's easy to move now that way. In your ear. Facing your opponent. Easy to up. Just there, and you're ready. The sword here is uh, looking a lot like a 12th century, beginning of the 13th century uh, sword with the Cray Guard and the Brazil nut pommel there. This pommel helps to hold the sword in your hand when you are moving it around. And I love this pommel there because it helps you to control your sword. Even if uh, you start to be tired by uh, the fight, the fact that this shape there is quite large, even if uh, you relieve a bit your, your grip by, well, it could be because of many things, but it will hold in your hand. Even if you see, I'm not completely closing my grip. It all in the end in the movement and this shield could be completed by a spear as well spear like that pretty simple in its shape with blade there the cut stab and at the bottom just a simple back yeah nothing pointy just something to bring a bit of balance there and help you to carry it proper distance, proper range to keep the enemy at a good distance. You can of course switch one grip for another and vary this depending on what's at the front of you, what you have to make and what are the orders, what 
depending on such a thing. Use it like the Greeks, yeah. And uh, not only the Greeks, we have medieval representation like this with a guy holding up his spear like that. So, also getting your spear there in order to stab, work there, push hold your opponent with the spear and that with a that spear with a butt there without any spike in order to avoid any problems with the, the butt with your comrades behind and that's for that and also for yourself yeah because I think in tight formation like that here for the for what I imagine about the, the Condorian this will match and would be enough. If you have someone which is coming too close there you can still stab with the butt even if it's not pointy it will be still a bit efficient to just plant this into his face or his helmet to push it, push it back and then try to continue your work with the spear and you can also just switch from the spear which gives a certain range there gives a certain distance with there your opponent at the front and switch easily to the sword for a little close up on uh, some accessories you have here yeah, the sword the two helmets and also a leather bottle which could be very handy even if the leather won't be the the only choice you'll have. Perhaps clay would do as well. Another weapon I wanted to introduce was this axe, this birdish. We have a description concerning the uh, Gondorian armies and in uh, Losanar, if I do remember right, there is a man with long axes. And why not have this kind of uh, axes there? It's Perhaps it should be a bit longer for the end or perhaps up there 30 cm in addition could be good but it's not a bad length here and you can have this axe working with someone with a shield you will see this in the video concerning the formations and uh, the tactics for the Gondorian army once again link in the description this shape uh, I like the shape Simply because this uh, could be used just like uh, an axe to hack. But not only will try to hack and slash through your opponent, but also with this shape here. It's easy to use it just like a short spear because of its weight perhaps just with the two ends and you can still stab try to use it to block perhaps someone's shield and use the lever you would have with the two ends there while your comrade just aside will perhaps use his sword and finish the job or perhaps the spear depends and also you can be the guy which is just behind a line of spearman there you are just waiting with your axe and if someone come too close to the spearman and they can not use the whole range of the, the weapon you can keep the opponent away from the front line from their shield line you just smash the head of your axe, you bury it right in your opponent's face, shoulder, helmet, whatever. And that way, this guy won't come back too close. So you could be just the guy helping a bit behind the front line, helping them to push it away, the, the opponent when they come too close. Just give a bit of a muscle and punch back when the, the fight is getting too tight and try to create a distance with your opponent.
in practice you can be just facing your opponent, blade there, stabbing him, you come too close, use the control you have with two hands there and your whole body behind the axe. For that, you can be doing this like that, coming from down to up, and perhaps come beneath the helmet. If it's an open helmet like this, you can come there and right in the chin or in the neck, just come there. And also, as I said, when the opponent comes too close, come just hack through him and if he's not dead, just push it back, push him back where it belongs, far away from our soldier. Yeah, perhaps the main attempts from Losana could look like this. See a guy with a, a gun bezel, with a padded hood, seriously padded hood, this one is really thick and a chainmail there in order to prevent you for the cuts that could come as the guy with the long axe won't be perhaps uh, at the front but still have the end exposed with no shields perhaps just have the, the mitts there, the padded mitts and even chainmail on them and for a Gondorian knight perhaps you would see a chainmail coming up over the, the gambeson and well, as I said knight it would be someone which could be also on a horse and will just have sword, spear, everything there or even just someone which uh, would have the luck to have a wall chainmail like that at the front as uh, some of the the young soldier would be professional. I would be, wouldn't be at all a surprise to see a chainmail in the ranks of the condo, and a lot of them actually, because we know that for sure the condo are very handy concerning uh, metalwork. We have references concerning the fact that they are the ones producing chainmail for the royal rims, and also when we have description concerning Imrail at the Battle of the Pelennor Fields he have a Vembrace, a polished Vembrace which means that they are able to produce plates well, that's not like wall gear plate but I do believe that we can have some uh, key parts made out of plates perhaps the, the forearms, the chin guards there perhaps for the elbow, the knees and the shoulder just that and you'll have a, a good start for protection if you complete this with a good shield. You have here the chainmail, three different kinds. This is the lighter one, flat ring, wedge rifted. They are like uh, corners, like a triangular pieces of uh, metal that are used to rivet the ring together, which bring uh, a much lighter mail in the end. The mitts made it with flat ring and there there is round rivets. Those rivets bring uh, a heavier um, chainmail in the end. And this is the heaviest of all, the round riveted chainmail. The mails are round, not flat, and the rivets there bring also a bit of uh, weight. So everything there will be heavier than the two first you saw. With my experience now, I don't want to wear that kind of chainmail anymore <laughs> when you try the flat one even the with the round rivets it's a uh, well you are not coming back you're not coming back from that and same when you try the wedged one you see the difference as well and no way it's uh, you know why it's uh, it's harder to make and uh, why it costs more to have a lighter uh, chainmail but it's worth the price when you can afford it. It's worth it. The wood there could uh, be a good match with this chainmail because it's very thick. It's about four layers of uh, padding. It's very thick, so why not as a protection? But for a full chainmail to add the combination there, which would be like this one, which is very 
very thick there. This gambeson is uh, too thick for chainmail. You have four layers, if I record correctly, there as well. Four layers of protection, of padding, and it's too much. If you want to have a chainmail over there, perhaps just to have uh, three or two layers. It works quite well. We even know that during the medieval ages, the knights, the fighters, would have uh, not that much thickness in the gambeson, but add some pieces of leather, of hard leather, on some part of their body in order to protect them beneath the chainmail. So you will have the gambeson, the leather, which will be hardened, and then over the the leather parts here and there, you will have the chainmail. That was my take on the Gondorian soldier. And if you wonder how I made this design there, it's based on the, the design left by Tolkien for the, the tree, the Gondorian tree, on one of the books. And there is this tree, and I try to stay as close as possible to the tree he left and give a bit of balance with uh, the roots there. Just uh, bring this balance that we know in nature and that uh, there is not only uh, leaves. Uh, all the branches but there is a lot of roots beneath and there is seven stars ah there is seven flowers there like we can see on the book cover as well as the, the leaves there the number of leaves are based on the number seven the same for the roots here you have at the base you see seven roots at the base here so i went for balance like this around the number seven the two link everything together. I hope you enjoyed my interpretation, my ideas, and I hope this will bring you some other ideas for your own gear, your own lab gear, and other things. And if you want to see more about Middle Earth, there is a lot of videos that I already made concerning the different uh, soldiers and uh, civilization, the Roy Rims, the Gondorian Rangers, the, the Landing, uh, the Elf from Mirkwood, and other will follow as well. To keep in touch, just follow the channel, follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, DeviantArt, whatever you pick, you choose. See you guys. And if you want to learn how to make a shield like this, which is curved, there is a tutorial on my channel for this kind of shape on the shield. And I will even create a world tutorial concerning how I made this kind of shield, the Gondorian shield, so check it out.